Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. And yeah, DJ Enough is here. I'm here, y'all. This is crazy. The heavy hitter is here. Now, enough reminded me, Saif, that you and I don't yeah. remember anything about our history. We had enough on an episode, in a, on a live episode. On a live episode? Yeah, we were in Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn, yeah. Which one? The Flex one? Not yes. the Flex. Was it the Flex one? I think it was the Flex one. Like, did we do a mini interview? Like, did we interview you first? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. I was in the what crowd. What was the other live one? one? There was one I was in the crowd and one I was actually the fl- there. We only did a live one in Brooklyn once with Flex. Then we did the live one at... um. DJ at, uh, enough. That what was that spot? Highline. DJ enough one app. Let's see. You're searching it. Look at the research we have on this. It says <laughs> we have a crack step. Uh, one app at Masters of Ceremony. He was on with us there. Oh yes, yes. He came yes. on at the Masters Barclays. of Ceremony concert at the Barclays Center. Ah. Which was a big day. Okay. Yeah. Well no, you yeah. got overshadowed, E. Okay. Because yeah, we, we had Rakim. We, we had Rakim on live. Everlast, Far Side. Lost the Everlast episode. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh. That's where um, yeah. Capone's boy called you the Jew N-word. That's correct. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, uh, we are attempting. I want to apologize in advance for anything that gets uh, fucked up about this episode. I see recording and levels. At the very least, we'll have a totally fine audio podcast. Right. God willing, between the crack staff of myself, Emilio, and the great Billy June, we got these cameras operating well enough. But E... You're first, not not because we want you to be a guinea pig of our in-person studio interviews, sure. but because we just been talking recently about like you might be one of the most untapped into treasure troves <laughs> of hip hop well, history. True. Because we we you know I don't work at Hot Ninety Seven anymore. Disgrace. I was disgracefully uh, escorted out of the building, but. But we work with you and you're a friend, so sometimes you forget how deep your friends go into the culture and the history, you know what I mean? That's true. And E, yours is is a, a crazy story. I've had some fun. We have to start at the very beginning. All right, let's go for it. Um, and, and apologies. Lower East Side? Born on the LES? No, born in Harlem. Born in Harlem. Born in Harlem. 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 Never yes. heard that. My parents, See? My See? parents lived and resided and dated in Lower East Side, so I was made in Lower East Side. <laughs> You were made Lower East Side. But raised predominantly in Brooklyn. Wow. Man, where's the Harlem? What, 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 where do, what street were you conceived on? Like Ken Mayer? Yeah. What, oh. do you, what do you think? <laughs> Probably 4th Street and Avenue Fourth C. Avenue C. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Alphabet City. Yeah. Okay, okay. 100%. And, and then when did they move to Brooklyn? Well, to Brooklyn, yeah. 1979. Well, you're a bro- you're, you consider yourself a Brooklyn You know why? Because it took me a long time to kind of figure this out. But wherever you kind of like went to junior high school and high school, yeah. it's kind of like I agree. you kind of like... I agree. No, I think even a little before that. Yeah, but I did, a, I did elementary school, junior high, high school, and college all in Brooklyn. I went 10th grade was when I moved to Long Island. I did 9th grade in New York City. So I consider I'm a New Yorker. But you're, but Long Island is still not upstate. No, it's not upstate. You're, you're, honestly, there are people who have lived in Long Island their whole life, and they're straight up New Yorkers. It's they're right here all the time. Queens. It's the, yeah, it's yeah. right there. It's right there. So wait, wait. So I'm, I'm confused. Then you, Brooklyn is where the first place your parents moved from Harlem. No, no he was Harlem. Just born I was in just Harlem. born in Harlem. Physically, like the hospital. Yeah, the hospital, Metropolitan yeah. Hospital. Okay, okay, got it, got it. But they were living in the LES. Living in the LES. T- until what age you said? We moved in '79 to Brooklyn. 79. But it was just my mom. My dad and mom got a divorce. My mom moved to Brooklyn only because she wanted to be close to Brooklyn College. That's it. That's all it was. And uh, at this point, what part of Brooklyn? Flatbush. Flatbush, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And this is 79. So we're talking about, we always hear about like hip hop in the Bronx in 79. Right. And... What was the what was the scene? What was your first exposure to hip hop in Brooklyn in the early years? What do you think he was in his twenties? Like five. Oh, no, he was man. seven. What were you, six, seven years young, old? Man, I was probably like. No, eight. what was? I don't know. Seven. What was eight. the scene? No. Describe. <laughs> no, what was the? What were the clubs like? <laughs> yeah, I just finished doing like an interview with Clark and Kid Capri, and we talking about. Yeah, it was tight. They were the talking about the, uh, the, the cool Herc party and, and like what was it like back in those days? And I was like, guys. I was probably two. You know, like, I'm like, there's no way. I wasn't outside back then. And I wasn't outside in 79 either. You weren't outside yet? No. I was listening to radio shows like WHBI 105.9. Uh, I was listening to the Zulu Beat show. I was listening to Awesome 2, Teddy Ted. So we're, that's mid-80s. That, the, that's the, the early 80s. In the early 80s. Me. Yeah, like 82, 83, 84. Somewhere around that time. So listening to Public Enemy for the first time, I was like, 
what the hell is this? Yeah. I was like, I put this face on like a fear. Like I said, is this really happening? And I'm listening to them rap like, oh my God, the world's going to be over. These guys are talking some ish I've never... Welcome to the terror. And this is literally like one, two in the morning on a school night. Wow. All right? So, you know, I'm, I'm 12, 13, if that, listening to this music at two in the morning. There's no headphones, no smartphone, right, no right. Spot, Spotify or, or, or Apple Music. I'm You're listening. Clock radio. I'm listening yeah. from my dad's stereo system right. at one in the morning, as low as possible, as low as you can because there's it. no headphones either. I See, mean, my dad had headphones, but they were his headphones, yeah. and I was not allowed to touch them. So on the speaker, you had to keep it mad low. <laughs> mad low. Now, yeah. sorry, this is uh, it's random. Is yeah. that like a stepdad? No, my real dad. Real dad. So yeah. you would also. You, was, you said your dad was out of the picture. Oh, you yeah, go, he did. He got divorced, but then it went back and, back and forth. forth. You know how the, oh. you know how the parents do. They got it, got get it, got divorced it, got for a year or two, then they try it again, and then that kind of thing. Got it, got Ooh. it. Okay. And um, at what point? At what age did you take like a more serious interest in the music thing? Like, nah, I'm really into this. Um, it wasn't until after like the break dancing era for me. It was like I was the guy who was kind of like I held the radio with the. There was a crew called Nasty with Rock out of Flatbush, and they were dope. Nasty with rock. Yeah, they used to battle like guys from Break Till Dawn out of Coney Island. That was their like arch nemesis group. Okay. But I was the guy who kind of like carried the radio back then. Somebody was, had to. I was the radio dude. I was a little yeah. chubby guy. <laughs> Plus, when they started doing windmills and stuff, I was like, that's not for me. <laughs> no. I could hold the radio, though. I'm going to get the radio with it. No, you, you know what? He was one short of the guy who was sticking the plug into the yeah, lamppost. Lamp yeah. 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 That was more technical. That's it. But this, yeah. he, is, he was holding the radio. I was it's holding the radio. Important job, man. Well, guy. by the way, don't knock it. By the way, it, it is the the DJ job. Yeah. I mean, you were essentially being the DJ. You're and playing back in those days, dance. I would make pause tapes. I would take the, the the greatest records from the radio and I would just record them and I would try to make pause tapes to extend the breaks on these damn mixes or whatever. And that's what actually came out to be the guy's workout when it was like break dancing in the field. Oh, oh you, would, you would end up making I would, their... I would make the music and the, yeah, the cassettes back in those so days. Saif, you ain't hip-hop like that. You never no, did I that. You didn't, you weren't, didn't you weren't pause tape mixing for no, B-Boys. That was, that, was no. a, that was a real deal for me. That was everything. What was your name at that point? The Real Truth? Yeah. Yeah. EWOP. EWOP. E w e not bad. E it's not the worst we've heard. E-W-O-P. So like, remember how Doo-Wop had his name, Doo-Wop? Yeah. It was EWOP. <laughs> That's not a bad name because your name is Ephraim. Yeah. So E is always prominent right. in your name. Of Any nickname is going to have And e WAP in it. was a thing back in the day. Was it the, yeah. Do the yeah. WAP. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was is a good the one. The WAP was a thing. When did you get turntables? Uh, I want to say 1985. Ooh. Which, what, because, were these, what were these? Because, two? all right, my first turntable was an upright turntable system that I got yeah. as a birthday gift. And I was happy, but I really wasn't happy. Right. It wasn't what it, you wanted. Because it wasn't an SP, I mean, sorry, it wasn't a Technique 1200. It and that wasn't. was, already, the techniques were already the thing in 85, huh? It was, it was, a, it was just starting to be a real thing. Yeah. It okay. was becoming a thing, but I remember seeing it on the album or single cover of the Malcolm McLaren and the, mm. the world famous Supreme Team yes. show. The, the double Dutch single or Well, one of the singles scratch. had the vinyl, right? Yeah. And I, the turntable, and I was like, what the hell? And I looked at it because I had a Technique SL1 and a, B, and a B2. And I was a sh straight arm and one was a, a, a S arm. For the record, I just want to let you know right now. If you're out there listening and you never DJ with unmatching turntables, you're not a real DJ. Right. That's what it was. Well, I had a turntable and then like a little, like you said, like a little stereo system. Right. I wish I would have kept it. it. Had like two tape decks, a radio, yeah, yeah. and a turntable on top. That's the same exact thing I had. And I used to play the record on there, and then scratch with the other better turntable. I bet you our parents bought it from the same spot. Yeah. Maybe the Wiz. I had to yeah. be the Wiz. I wish I kept that. <laughs> and man. see, I'm I'm so modern era relative to you geezers that my my move was I had a I had a first at first first I had the belt drive turntable and my parents CD player. Yeah, the stereo go. CD there component. You, there you go. Then eventually I got one techniques, and it was a long time where I was just finding ways to rock off one. Me too. And then like a year later, I was able to get the, the second one. Me too. So what records were you? Do you remember what records you were buying when you were initially buying My records? My first record I ever bought on vinyl was probably Set It Off by Strafe. Mm. Wow. It was a club classic. Yeah. And then back in those days, anything that was on Profile, Tommy Boy, or Def Jam, anything. Because I mean that. When I went into the store... When you saw the Def Jam wall or the Tommy Boy wall, you knew, or the Profile wall, you was like, anything on those labels are official. Anything. Yeah. yeah. 
And then back in those days, it was kind of proven. Like, anything on Tommy Boy was official, profile official, he got home Def with, Jam official. He got home with that Orange Juice Jones record. What? I saw you <laughs> and him <laughs> walking in the rain. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. And then, and, then you, and then a lot of people may not remember this if you're not a DJ nerd. Like, I'll just be honest. There are a lot of Tommy Boy and profile records from the early, mid-80s mm-hmm. that, like, I see them but don't know what they are. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they're like dance records and shit that I don't. Yeah, yeah. Like, they were club records. Yeah. That like I would see, but I I didn't really know. Yeah, like like C Bank or something like that. Yeah, like the, like those type of yeah, records. On next plateau, yeah. Um, on next plateau, yeah. So so were you like when did you what what age were you? Do you remember the age when no. you first rocked a party in any way? Oh yes, my first party. I can tell you the first party. My first party was these guys called the Love Brothers. The Love Brothers were, were my homeboys from Brooklyn, and I had to do an interview to DJ this club for them. And they were like, so the, this guy named Jose goes, yo, I love this mix you do with After 7 and Sucker MCs. Can you do that mix over for my brothers? So I was like, all right, cool. So I'm playing, can't stop. Uh, and I'm playing Sucker MCs underneath like a nice blend and I'm cutting and scratching. and I go into Sucker MCs and they fell in love with the mix. And that's how, how I heard it, on a tape? Or? On a cassette. Oh, I recorded it from my crib, literally right. live, and then I gave it to them on a cassette. He got a phone call. Yo, we're going to start our party. We're doing our party with this kid named Tuffy. Tuffy helps Ralph McDaniels on Video Music Box. Mm. He's a host. Yeah. He's kind of a big deal. So then we called the night Tuffy's Candy Store. It was the first Sunday night party way before Flex even started his tunnel parties. Way before. We're talking, so this is like. This is 91, maybe. Early like 90s. That. Early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, right? Early 90s. And then maybe after that ran, after that run, I think the Jessica and Flex started the tunnel. But we were Where the first was this? Up. It was on Club Negril on 46th Street and Broadway, right off of Broadway. It was an African club, but it was a dope spot. And it was right across the street from the California club. And and, and how old were you? Um, that, I don't remember. 20, 19? I'm probably in my early 20s, if I'm not mistaken. And and during the teenage years? That you, sounds like a big party. Yeah, because no, like... It was you, a huge party. No, but you wasn't doing like... Parties as a teenager, like, yeah, like school? Yeah, I was, so but that was the, like, that, those little house parties I was doing. Yeah. Right. That, that's when I was still local. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I was still, like, right. like, like Queen Latifah says in Juice. You just, you oh, just you're local. local. You're just local. local. I was definitely local. So I was doing, like, my, my big to-do party back when I was local was I did a high school party. Okay. And this was for my stepsister at the time. Her name was Samantha. It was her sweet 16. And her father was the super of the basement that I lived in. So we have access to the whole entire building on Brooklyn, right? But I invited everybody from Canarsie High School, mm-hmm. Midwood High School, Erasmus High School, Edward R. Murrow High School, Lincoln sounds, High School. Sounds like murder. Before you knew it. <laughs> no, had, this, this sounds like a podcast that white girls would listen to about true crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, but everybody and their mother from Brooklyn came. It was a real big to-do. Cops came. They shut the party down. Wow. It was one of those. Like, what are y'all doing? In an, in an apartment building? In, in the apartment basement. Building, in the basement. Wow, like where the garbage chute is the garbage and the whole shoot, like they, storage. You, yep, you go through the wow. garbage and then you end up in an area where it's just literally a big area. Yeah, that's some New York shit right there. We had the boom, boom, bap speakers and it was really a party. Now, did you grow up with, I don't want to get, I, and I don't know the answer to this, but I don't want to mess this up. Did you grow up around any other notable hip hop people? Because of Brooklyn in that time, I feel like there's a chance. There was some. Like who? Tell us. Um, <laughs> I don't like, know. Like the... The block parties we would go to were like Clark Kent was DJing at these block parties. Okay. Um, I would go to this guy named Professor Paul's house, and he was like a legendary Flatbush DJ. Like, he was the guy. He was the guy. He had pink turntables. We used to call them Pink Panthers. Wow. wow. But Hitman Howie T Ooh, would go. record and some DJ sessions at his crib. And I also went to school with Chub, uh, Chub Rock. See, see, so Chub Rock, you hear me? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so Chub Rock would have that that voice. Hey, bro, how you doing, bro? Like he would talk with that weird, that weird. Like I felt like what he, is like, that voice? Like, like I felt like he was talking from London or something. Like, I, hey, I never even hey, thought bro, about that. Like what anyway, voice is so, Chub Rock doing? I don't know, but that's how he talked for real. And he used to always wear trench coats in, in junior high. By the way, I very much want Chub Rock on the spot. Yeah, that'd be Just amazing. Yeah, so him. Wait, what, what school was that? Um, I went to Midwood High. No, Junior High School Huddy, H-U-D-D-E. Mm. And then um, back in those days, there was, uh, I forgot his name, Kurt something. Kurt was famous too, but he used to run with like Supercat 
and those guys from like Brooklyn and Queens and Long Island, like the reggae dance hall vibes, because we were in Flatbush, it was a very big thing for our, yeah. our neighborhood and community. Like me coming out the Lower East Side, leaving Manhattan, going to Brooklyn, it was culture shock for the first time. Yeah. So I grew up with Jews, Irish people, and Puerto Ricans in Lower East Side. That's they, yeah. Right? And then I go to Brooklyn, it's like Jamaicans, Guyanese, mm -hmm. Haitian, Trini, I'm yeah, yeah. daddy. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? It was a real culture shock for me. So junior high school, high school, I'm raised with these West Indians. But then it did actually help because it was my first like real introduction to like Caribbean flavor music. Mm -hmm. So I got the edge on everybody else in the yeah. city. So when I would come to the city to do my thing, Red Alert would be like, yo, do your reggae thing, bro. Do oh, your the, reggae really? Thing. Yeah. Because yeah, wow, Red, got about the Red from Harlem, so they kind of... They they dipped and dab into reggae music, but not as not deep like as, that because like then did. because like if you if you Red Alert's doing a party, and there's a lot of people from Brooklyn there, right? They tend to be at least of West Indian descent, so they more used to wanting to hear some reggae music mixed in. But like 100%. that's what that's how I got my name 100%. with Flex because Flex didn't want to play reggae. Well, I, was, I was about to say, wow, what a through line between the two of you, yeah. Puerto Ricans who were known for playing yeah. a mean yeah. dance hall, set. mean dance hall. Wow. It's always high respect. And it was it's always like a good break. Max Glazier and them guys. Yeah, like amazing. a good break for a DJ. Go ahead, play like 20, 30 minutes of reggae. I'm, I'm going to be right back. Smoke yeah. blood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow, that's very cool. So so, so there were a good amount of hip-hop people around 100%. around the way. Yeah, around the way a little bit, yep. And how big did the, the party at Negril get? Did it started jumping off. My man. So the first three weeks, nobody shows up. Okay. Often happens with so parties, now guys. I'm literally like, I'm like, all right. I'm nine hundred dollars in the hole owed to me, cause my first night DJing it was gonna be three hundred bucks, yeah. and I was like three hundred bucks to DJ? I'll do it for fucking free. Yeah, they, but yeah. I took the three hundred dollars and I was except I was well I didn't get the three hundred dollars for like almost a month later. But my <laughs> point was this: this was this is how this is to tell you the timeline exactly. Okay, the red zone was popping on Thursdays. And Flex used to do guest spots on Thursday. I think yeah, I've, I've heard Flex shout out red zone. Before. Pete Rock, yeah. Premier. Clark Kent were also DJs in rotation, and even Kid Capri at the time. Butt Naked Tim Dog was the host. Wow. Okay, you know who that is, Butt Naked Tim Dog? Uh, yeah. I, I just know, I just know what they he, he used to roll around Uptown MCA records yeah. around. He was down with, like, Diddy. Uh, Heavy D. Heavy you know, D like, yeah. People. Yeah. So he was kind of the host, and he would take his shirt off and jump on stage. And Hence the Butt Naked part. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Got part. it. Okay. Yeah, so that, that was It's not him. just a clever name. So... I went to Tuffy and, I, and some of the guys said, listen, why don't we just go to the hottest party in New York City at the time and why don't we just give out some free complimentary tickets? Because even if we don't make no money at the door, but if we have people at the venue, yeah. they'll be drinking. So at least, okay, we won't have no money for the door, but at least the venue makes some money. Yeah, it's a hot they're not, party. They're not going to kick us out the next week because we made some money. Yeah. Sure enough, after that little you know, marketing plan from DJ by way, Enough. By the way, DJ Enough, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of these... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hit you guys with a lot of these kids today, but a lot of these kids today don't understand the importance of free shit to get right. things started. Right, right. Because you need people in That's the door it. to want other, uh, so other people want to be there. Hundred percent. So, for this legendary party, my first club night, this is the people that are coming to my party. De La Soul, nice and smooth, uh, Guru wow. and and God Premier. Wow. Good thing you gave them free tickets. Yo, <laughs> Showbiz AG. Wow. Shaba Ranks. And the most memorable, probably Dougie Fresh, because he Wait, schooled me. This is the me. first night, or just like around the, the beginning when of When it the first started popping off. Of, yeah, a little bit of everything, bro. Yeah. Because they all were online, they were all over there. And I'm like, wow. wow. Even Jessica and Flex and Red Alert, they all came to the party. That's crazy. It was amazing to me. This is my first, my first club, bro. Yeah. And wait, wait, were you, the, were you the only DJ? I was, yeah, I was the guy. You were the guy. You were I prime was, time. That's it. I was prime time. I, st I opened. I did the middle and I close. Do you remember? I remember I've had six, seven hour sets. <laughs> Jeez. I remember for three hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh no, you bring. Yeah. How many crates were you bringing to something like that? At least eight. At least. Who was who was carrying those crates? <laughs> Haitian Pat. Who Haitian was downstairs. Pat, he's one. still with me. Yo, Haitian Pat's day one like that. He's, yeah, day one. Like I'm gonna that. be honest. I didn't know because I've Haitian known Pat. Pat went to high school with me. Wow. He doesn't Pat, remember, but one. me and him smoked weed together in 1983. I was, I was <laughs> telling him, he's like, I don't remember that, bro. I was a smoker. He's like, you're full of shit, bro. I remember. 80, I didn't know you. So yeah. for anyone listening, Haitian Pat is like a, a, a staple around because of enough. He's all, he's always been around. He's a great Yo, guy. Yeah, he's the first Haitian we ever shouted out on the radio. Before the Fuji's, before Wyclef, <laughs> before Lauren, before 
Praz. <laughs> like, he was the first Haitian being shouted on Kiss FM. So Haitian, Haitian Pat was helping you with the crates. 100%. And do you remember some of the records that were super ringing off in your first club run? Party Groove. I was about to say, that's... Uh, De La Soul Saturdays. Um, nice and Smooth Hip Hop Junkies. It's fine. Um... Let me see. There's that a few, bop, there's a bop, few bop, others. Bop, which set off a party. There's a few others. Yeah, all that was a go at, at those parties. But I remember what getting, about non hip hop records? Uh, like on the reggae tip was Barris Hammond, um, Broadway. Yeah, no. And, um, and, 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 oh, um, uh, I forget. Uh, yeah, with Cuddy Ranks and yeah. the remix. Were you playing dance? Were, were you playing dance records too? Uh, on, uh, like dance? Like home? Like, like what about um? What about du, the regular du, Q-tip? Du, 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 du. Huh? Oh, D Light Groove yeah, is the heart. D Light. Yeah, that kind of stuff was around a little you, bit. A little bit, okay. Yeah, but it was mostly hip hop and dancehall. It was mostly hip hop and dancehall, at least for us. Um. Okay. And so, how I long? I played no Spanish music at all. Sell out. Um. <laughs> definitely, hundred percent. They would look at me like, "Yep, sold out, sold out, sold out." <laughs> It was just only <laughs> hip hop and R and B. And I remember Dougie yelling at me like, "Why are you DJing like this?" I'm like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "You got to keep them up here, and you got to bring them down here, and then bring them back up here." And then he was telling well, me how to you talk. had them. I don't know. All you up you here, too right? I might I might have had them too. I, I might have been going too hard or too yeah. whatever. But he was trying to teach me how to roller coaster party. That is that that's, is the true art of DJing. That's that I never knew about. No. Learned, honestly, I learned it from I think you and Flex and Red Jessica at the tunnel when. Because the tunnel, the environment of the tunnel was so dangerous that you had to play a certain way. You had to or bring it not, down. Yeah. You would have to, you have to bring it's it down because it, it gets crazy. Yeah. Oh, you have to bring it down just so. You have to bring it down a little bit. Like it gets too wild and we <laughs> want it to get wild. And then you come back down a little. You bring it back up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, listen, that, Saif, you know one of my favorite stories that I love to, uh, that I love to tell on the podcast. About your prostate exam? What? <laughs> sorry, well, I don't know what sorry. Which one are you talking about? About Michael Jackson penis. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 that's not what I meant either. <laughs> um, about when Tigger used to tell me, I remember I, I was interning for Tigger, and Tigger, I apologize to all of our listeners, who had said he had just come back from a party in the South where he was DJing, and he played Make Him Say, uh. <laughs> they had to stop the party when Mystical's verse came on because they were about to throw someone off the balcony. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Like, they had to That's stop. Crazy. That's crazy, yeah. In the middle of that joint. So, yeah, you have to learn as a DJ how to, how to pace yourself. And you don't yeah. want to spend people either to the point where it's like they, people can only go so long. Yeah. But you got to let people go get a drink. But the too. crazy shit at the time, this is my first club, he's kind of sunning me. And he act, and do right, he is the greatest entertainer, right? Yeah. So I'm over here like, Initially, I'm like bummed. I'm like, damn, this fucking the world famous Dougie Fresh telling me what the fuck I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Like with my own set. So I'm like, here I'm thinking I'm finally making it. I'm no longer local. I'm in the city now. I'm in Times Square DJing. Yeah. All the greatest of the greats are at my fucking party. <laughs> and then Dougie Fresh comes and busts my bubble. And and like you can, and, <laughs> and it's like you can't exactly go, well, what does he know? Yeah. He's literally the world's greatest entertainer. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. No, and there's a famous story where people don't talk about it because because Dougie Fresh was telling enough this, and enough was like, oh, I, I. And then he was like, hey, yo. Oh, hey, yo, I. And he hey, created yo, the whole record. I. And that was it. It happened right in that conversation. <laughs> he stole his record. So, how yeah, long man. did the Negril uh, party run last? It didn't last that long, maybe about a year or so. You know, we were new. We didn't kind of really know what the fuck we were doing. When did radio begin for DJ Enough? Okay, so. Oh, I'm, I know this. All right, so I'm DJing a Shut club up, on 23rd Street okay. and 11th Avenue. It's called Spodiotes. Oh. It's across the street from the U-Haul. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, literally. To, yeah. It's called Spodiotes. Okay. We're doing a party there, and then Red Alert How comes to me, okay. and he has, Red Alert has his poopoo juice in his hand, and he goes, hey, enough, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah, what's up, Red? He goes, I'm thinking about... Actually, how would you like to join me on Kiss FM Radio to help me out with some things? That's crazy. So I was like, ah, you're drunk, bro. Stop it. Yeah. I, re I literally called him drunk and told him to leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> I thought he was... Bugged. Well, he had the poo-poo juice. No, but yeah. I thought he was bugged. And then he says, no, I'm serious. So I was like, what? And then I got wind that Flex was leaving to start Hot 97. Wait, Flex used to... Flex was the under Red Alert. Yes, Flex was Red Alert's apprentice first. Right. Wow. So he's leaving... Kiss FM to start Hot 97. Yeah. And we're all laughing at the time. Of course. Because Hot 97 is a dance station. Right. Good and luck. Funk is leaving the classic Kiss FM to fucking go start Hot 97. And at this point, Kiss FM in, in hip hop terms, because 
terms. We're now like in 91, 92. Kiss has already been a staple of hip hop radio for five, six, seven years. Easy, yeah. Where it's been like you, you already had all this incredible shit and BLS. Easy. So it'd be one thing if Flex had said he was switching to BLS. Right. But no, but no. we're going to go start turning no. Hot 97. No, he's going to the dance station. Right, to and the dance at station. At this point, Glenn Fisher's there, Scribble, uh, I think, uh, I forgot who else is over there. I know Dennis is over there too. Well, at, 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 oh, um, at, at, at Hot, hot Baltazar. Yeah, Baltazar. Those, Baltazar, kind, of, those yeah. kind of people. That's what exactly what it was. And this is something that Flex never talks about. Okay. And I don't know why. Maybe he doesn't want to because he's not whatever. But when he first started, all the whites in New York, the Guineas and all that, they were fucking calling the radio oh, no. station and yeah. get this music yeah, off the radio 100%. are you fucking kidding me yeah our italian producer from staten island now, nodding his head knowing now, he's like, i called now yeah. this is the truth this is the <laughs> it fucking was his parents truth. on the phone <laughs> this is the truth yeah, this is the great. truth i don't know if it's just well, staten island or bay ridge or Bettenhurst, but those neighborhoods were not a oh, fan that station was of funk master flex taking yeah. over their dance station because mumba that mean that meant no more tka mm. that meant no more cover no, girls that, dance that was big at no that time any of that stuff <laughs> So wow, that's crazy. So, oh, it's so crazy. people, so it's a different time, bro. How long did it take in your eyes for Hot ninety seven to actually start catching on and people thinking of it as like, oh, I, I, let's turn on ninety seven point one. This is a thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe a few months in. It wasn't that that it long. Been, it, maybe it could have been too long. Maybe a year, if that. Okay, and that to me was short time. Yeah, it because is. Remember, radio, remember, format th switch. Think yeah. about it. Funk is only doing Friday nights. That's right, Friday night street show. What, an hour? Maybe if that. And then it, it was two it, hours, and then it was three well, hours. Was he coming on earlier than the normal rap shows? That, I don't remember. I think he came on like an hour earlier like to get the jump. Yeah, to something? get the jump on like Red Alert or whoever was on. Maybe um, something like that. BLS. And okay, and at that point, so now you go with Red. Right. We're, of all the DJs yeah. around. Yes, sir. Of all the DJs that Red Alert knew and looked up to him, right? It's crazy. I always look at this like, me too. how did I get paid? Me too, a hundred percent. You yeah. know how but many? You know what he said? What? Mm. Asked him the same question. Yo, yeah. why me? Wait, you asked him then or I years later? No, then. Okay, why me? He said he felt like I had the most uh, head on whatever. Head, head was on straight. Yeah, yeah, my head was on straight. He was like, "This is not the streets. I'm taking you to corporate America. Right. You'll be able to you'll be able to handle yourself in the building. Properly. You gotta handle yourself in the daytime, yeah. talking to yeah, bosses and managers. And that's what it was. 100%. Yeah, man. But like, how many opportunities? Like you, like I still struggle with it to this day. Like, why me? Yeah, yeah. I think that about you also. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but but it's interesting because both you and Flex <laughs> yeah. are know how to and always have known how to operate in the station not just as djs right, right. but as business people and figureheads right. in the radio station right. and i'm you know we, we always get that there's a lot of like oh why not this guy why not that guy they were dope they were great yeah, mixers they were dope or every time red saw them out they were wasted like the they, djs i thought had a shot at doing that was probably like a kid capri ron g uh, even DJ Ace at the time, there was a bunch of DJs who were just really on fire in their own right, whether it was mixtapes, clubs, yeah. or they had a little ins and outs on doing some mixes on radio, and you kind of heard that. And I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna and, it's them. and it's interesting, because Capri is, 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 you know, you make an argument for him being the most notable DJ ever from New York. I mean, 100%. He's, and he had his radio moments. No, he was on fire on BLS. When oh, he, he was. When fire. he was on, Bro. he ran the city. Oh, but it was also... um. It was daily and it was early. It was and like he was only seven. On, and he was only on for like 45, 45 minutes. Yeah. Or something like was that. it seven o'clock oh, or? An hour. It was something like that. Six o'clock, maybe. Yeah, maybe early, yeah. So that that changed the game. No, it was crazy. He would come on at, I, I think, six o'clock. I don't think five. I, I think, think six. He was on for half an hour. Bro, it was like, it, I remember it was like 40 minutes. It was like, right, as you know, radio terms, it was past where you think the commercial would go and it would be like a little bit longer. But it was rocky. I worked in Chicken Max Choice. Max, Max, I, forgot the, who was the host? I worked at Chicken Choice in, in Wontaw, Long Island. And at 7 o'clock, I'd be like, hey, I'm going to go. I, I would make it my appointment to go to the back and clean the chickens. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> because I wanted to listen to uh, Kid Capri for that. Because it was short. You could get like a whole set. It, and he rocked it. No, you but he couldn't. But from what I know, what, he's, what I've heard him say, he couldn't... Um, Justify not going on the road to do this radio show for no money. Oh, right. Because he's, he's like, already... nah, they calling me to do this party. 
I gotta go. I got a boat party in Virginia. Yeah. I got this yeah, in he Florida. Loved, he loved the actual art of DJing at clubs, and yeah. he was the first big DJ to get his own tour bus and kind of toured multiple tour buses at that. Yeah, but radio at that time was probably like no, no money. Yeah, was, but it still it was everything. Yeah, like cause it's, it's it's setting the culture, but it wasn't crazy money. No, I mean he's no. probably getting a shift rate, you know, Maybe, or whatever. Yeah. We don't know what the deal was. So what, so what? When were you on? On for for for, for, for red? red? Yeah. Okay, so there's these things called music conventions, right? Of course. The Gavin, the BRE, yep. Jack the Rapper, oh, yeah. How Can I Be Down? How Can I Get Shot? Every time <laughs> those things went on, that was my time to shine. Red would, you red would fill would, in. Red would go, and I'd fill in. And I'd be like, ooh. And the only thing Red would be like, don't play Onyx, throw your guns in the air. And I'd be like, oh. Damn, that's all I wanted to play. That's what I wanted to play, the hottest record in the city. And I'd be like, why we can't play that? He goes, I have a child. And there's no way I could support rappers that support oh my guns. God. Like this is my early days of like listening to a parent. Right. Like he's not he's not red alert no more. He's like the parent. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shoot. And I, by the way, I mean, listen, yeah. I understand where he's coming from. No, I, I get it huh? now. It was a rough Why is I, your parent why is your child up at midnight listening to the radio? At that time, you need to fix your house. <laughs> no, but you see, that's me. Remember? I remember I said one in the morning, listen to the radio. Yeah. Right. That's us. Right. So, yeah. so they are gonna find a way to hear. 100%. And they did go pick him up, pick him up, bring him home dead. Dead. Shine them up, shine them up, shine them all head. head. One gun, on two, how many? Gun. Three, Three guns, gun. four. Oh, that's a lot of guns. Yeah. Think about it; it's a lot of guns. So you only filled in for Red Alert when he was away. I was only filling for Red when I was away. Well, what about regular? What were you doing regular weeks when he was there? I was, Carrying his crates? Were you like helping him out? No, no, bro, no, no. I mean, the most I got to do was like I set him up. I would go into the, the, the lockers and pull out these big cart machines, mm -hmm. and on these carts were promos and drops. Okay, and then in between that, he would cut and scratch, and then. Oh, you were there, there when he was on. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't only just come in when he was no. away. But then my into the building was I worked in the promo department driving a van, so I was a promo dude. Really? Working for Kiss, yeah. I worked in the van. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, me. Not, and, I mean, me and Big Henry Brown. We used to, and my man Kai and Kevin. Those were the guys, the street team. What about um? We had battles in the streets back in those days. Yeah, like, the street team back. I would then pull was, up in the sound system and I'll, I'll drown the other. Radio stations. You go up against BLS? Yeah, easy. Like, <laughs> with the van, because our van had a banging system. It did. <clears throat> That's smart. And you, you would pull up, and then we'd, like, take down their postal boards or take down, or we'd do things in front of their, like, uh, what they what they called back then? Uh, in stores. Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, at the in stores. Like oh, that, yeah. In stores at Dr. J's, we pull up at Dr. J's. Right, so all the stations are showing up to the <laughs> yeah, in store. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It'd, it'd be the funniest thing, but it'd be the best thing for the customers. Yo, when, 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 when Enough was pulling up, when Enough was pulling up next to the car next to him, it was like Master A's Jeep ass yeah, yeah, in real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And he was looking out his window, yeah. and you know who he was? Yeah, he was Spanish, the, Spanish the, Chico Rico Suave. Spanish Chico Rico Suave, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Talking to Ace about Chico that. Rico really suave. Bro, for real? Yeah, Spanish Chico. You said that to Ace one time? Yeah, one time. Yeah. Spanish Chico Rico nah, that Suave. Wasn't, huh? That wasn't to us. Yeah. There were some that, Spanish that, guys that, that were not into no, hip hop. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, who were playing Spanish music. 100%. So this, like, the fact that you were on the other side of it, like you were already in that building, must mm -hmm. have felt like magic. 1440 Broadway was the address to Kiss FM, and it oh. meant everything to me. Right across the street from Bryant Park. Wow. That's how many years how many years of KISS? Um, maybe early nineties and then uh at ninety four the lights went out. Ninety four the light, and you went straight to hot? No. No. B. I B. went straight I went straight to Europe. I, oh, I, we went BIGs between I, I lost my job. Okay. And then I felt well, like you, you, I felt like Cypher when he left hot. He went Eat Pray. You went to Eat Pray Love in Europe? Then, no, I'm gonna tell you what happened. <laughs> so on my last radio show, I get a fax. This is how old it was. Okay, I love facts. comes in. DJ Enough would love to book you in Switzerland. Can you please call? And I don't know why I had this stupid accent, but it's, it's Swiss enough. Anyway, so in my mind, now this is Brooklyn enough before I had any education, right? And I'm like, you know, who the fuck <laughs> listens to hip hop in Switzerland? Yeah, right. And this is me thinking, I'm thinking blonde hair, blue eyed chicks yeah. selling cheese, chocolate, and yogurt. Yep. You're not all it, wrong. Yeah. But it was that for, was there. For, Except for, they love hip hop. But that's what it was. But then when I get there, it's nothing but Latins, Africans, yeah. and I don't know what maybe like, Dutch. Like Middle Eastern, whatever they also, yeah. yeah, it was just crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I meet this incredible DJ, DJ Cutkiller, from Paris at my party. Me and him turned this party upside fucking down. Okay. 
And then for the next 12 uh. years, I'm DJing every year in Paris with fucking DJ Cutler. It's crazy. That's when, what's his name, Jamal? Yeah. Jamal from Stress used to yeah. come, you know, because me and Cypher would part Is of the Jamal same. from Stress your Jamal? Yeah. yeah. Me and, me That's and, how me, I met him. Me That's and Cypher, Jamal. Me and Cypher in the same fucking crew at the time. We were yeah. part of Flip Squad DJs, and I'm literally traveling in the world after I got my gig taken away from me so i was like fuck it all right i lost my radio shit but i'm traveling the world now Damn, but you caught the right you caught the right moment yeah. where like hip-hop because all those european guys were like either bootlegging they were popping though radio tapes they were and they were fucking <clears throat> people used to tape the radio and mail it to different countries you know? yo but just tape the radio listen and- i go to a record store you see an alert chuck chill out let alert. Yeah, just hours out. of radio. Let alert. Chuck, chill wow. out. Wow. Like, yo, everything. Yo, and so, by the way, I, I asked Camillo earlier for things to ask for you. Uh, ask oh, you. were? Yeah. Okay, he got and some questions. Camillo came through with two things that you just brought up. His first two questions. Number one, who were the Flip Squad DJs? Number two, did he live in France for a while? Oh, shit. So, did you live in France at any point? No, I, was, I just felt like I was there forever. I mean, I mean, I probably went there 15 times out of my career compared to, like, Maybe twelve in Japan. Those are the two most visited countries I've ever been outside of the, you know, the United States. Yeah, and Cut Killer was Wait, the this reason. is because you went to Cut- Switzerland and you met Cut Killer, yeah, and then so that became your French that was connection. Because of my French connection. French connection. Yeah. Wow. Uh, are you guys close to this day? Um, not close, but we still, you know, connect with each other. We just reconnected this last over the winter. Yeah. And and so <laughs> and so, who were the Flip Squad DJ? <laughs> this is so weird. Huh. Why? Our lives are so similar because I have the same. Relationship with Tim Westwood, of course. You know what I mean, like Spanish guys interning yeah. at a radio yeah. station, <laughs> going to Europe with the biggest yeah. DJ. It's yeah. so weird. And then you, we, brother, you were DJing for Little Kim. I know you did. Of course, I DJed you for did. Little Kim. Oh my God! Like, he never joke. told you that. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> oh, you, you asshole! It's a, it's he, a says term. he says it all the time, <laughs> bro. Oh my God, bro. But no, it was a big deal for us. It was a big deal It's a big deal. It sets off the stories. But yo, this weekend yo. I was in Houston. This guy yells out from the crowd, did you have a DJ for Little Kim? It's like a joke on our show. Uh, <laughs> and people are like, what the fuck is but happening? But no, no, I never put together until this very second. You were under flex. Puerto Rican dude, under flex, DJed for Kim. Puerto Rican dude. Under red alert, yep. DJ for Biggie. Yeah, yes, sir. like Crazy. I never put That's that it. together. That's it. That's it. So funny. So okay. So so I, we have to get to the Biggie part then. Mm-hmm. So so you're you're doing these shows in Europe. Wait, so so Kiss FM. Wait, why was it lights out? It was lights out for you? Well, or, because officially Hot ninety seven bought. Oh, Kiss that's FM. when they bought when they uh, bought Kiss. Right. So right. So okay. they couldn't rehire us. They put a freeze on the Kiss FM manager. You know, right. Part of it. Right. No hiring, okay, that's no what, okay. firing, no whatever. So then, this is my last show. I'm DJing. I get the facts. That's go, a crazy go thing to Europe. get. Yeah. So the it's facts amazing. on the last day. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's almost like on your last podcast, you said, "Me, I wait till the next thing is, no, I wait till it's over until I go into the next thing." You, mm-hmm. you said that on your podcast. So I was like, I, I was happy I didn't have to go through that process. It just naturally yeah. happened. Right. Who so, went with you to Switzerland? Um, that I don't remember. It's probably Jamal. At that time? Maybe at that time. Yeah. Well, maybe after that. But it was somebody like yeah. that. I don't think Pat went with me to that one. Um, That's your first time to Europe? First time. You had a passport already? No. I had you to had to go one. get, go get to a go passport. Get I had to get everything ready, take the photo, get everything Damn. filled out, the applications, all that shit. That's crazy. And I remember getting stopped in Paris because I was making mixtapes back then. And I would go and I have all these mixtapes on me. And they're like, what is this? And I'm like... Music, take it for free. No, no, not for sale. No, not for sale. Just take it. Right, right, right. <laughs> and wait, how much would you sell them for in Europe? I mean, it depends. You know, you go to a store, you take a bulk of them or just maybe take one as a master. It could be anywhere from 500 bucks a pop to maybe 25, 30 bucks a cassette. That's pretty good. Money. It depends, yeah. I can't believe how much mixtapes were sold for on the streets mm-hmm. of New York. Yeah. Like Capri tapes. And then they always ask me, hey, how come DJ Clue's not here? How come, you know, like I guess some of the DJs weren't, Making their rounds to Europe, but they were they were definitely in demand. Definitely, nah, you know them demand. hood dudes. I ain't going over I'm there. Not going over there yeah. I ain't going over there. Yeah, it takes time. It's corny about, over there. Yeah, to, I think Tony Touch, better learn with only regulars. Like, Doop, he went. Do no, I no, go? I said Tony Touch. Tony Touch. Yeah, do I was like, but I'm watching the I'm watching the news right now, smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, no, we know, but. Do- <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Jamal used to say, like, knock on doo door in the hotel. Yo, we got to go. Hold on, I'm watching the news. All right, so the Flip Squad DJs yeah, were. Yeah, so tell us who, okay. who, how, who they are and how they started. I don't know about how they started, but Cypher Sounds. Uh, I'm the last one. Big Cap. Big Cap. DJ Riz. Uh, Frankie Cutlass. Um, Budokan at one time. Budokan. Right, DC. Um, Mad Wayne. Mad Wayne. Rest in peace, Mad Biz. Wayne. Biz. Biz Markey. What about 9 M? Uh, no. He wasn't a DJ. And then in the very His end. His name was DJ 9 M. He was, no, not DJ 9 M. He was a rapper. In the very oh, he was the end, MC I think for we added Mark Ronson in the very end. He was the end of Mark, Mark Ronson, Ronson. Yeah. yeah. Big Juan App listener. He's listening, so shout yeah. him out. He's shout just, to Mark. Shout yeah. him out. Yeah. No, I see, what up, Mark? I see Mark well, you the, said at the Grammys. Yeah, you I said doo do wop too, yeah. Flex, Cap, Enough. Biz. Biz, Mad Wayne. Oh, yeah, maybe. I felt like there's more. The only person that was missing kind of around us was maybe, maybe, uh, Star, not Star, Love Buck Starsky. But he wasn't like an official member. Right, yeah. He was, he was around he was, them? Book, Jessica booked them yeah, a lot, yeah. Them. So wait, was Slip Squad all Jessica DJs? Yeah. Yeah, Jessica yes. managed the Flip, she created it. She created or with Flex. Flex. Yeah. They were DJs she managed. Got it. Yeah. That's Flex's first iteration of a DJ crew. Yes. Yeah. Before there were pit bulls and before lit digital the, DJs. Before and pit bulls and did lit digital DJs. That's yeah. why. So Heavy Hitters was created because DJ Enough never got an invite to be part of the famous <laughs> pit bulls. Oh, well, well, hold on. Let's not get there yeah. yet. But that's, uh, that's coming up next. That's coming. <laughs> right, cool. We'll talk Stay about Stay tuned. That. We got a lot. We'll talk okay. about okay. that. So that's, that's, that's how we get there. Um, all right. So you, you said that the biggie part came between radio stations, right? Yeah. So, okay. So I'm, okay, well, I'm, at this point, I'm doing... Uh, the Hot 97 Morning Show with Miss Jones. I about that too. No. Ed, Ed, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you how. I was. It was Ed Lover, Miss Jones, Kurt Flirt, and Fat Man Scoop. We kind of was like, that was the next wave of the morning show. Uh, Star and Buck Wild was doing the 5 a.m. Right? The pre-morning the pre-morning show, yeah. The pre-morning show before the morning show. Yeah. And we had a, a Hot 97 thing yearly that we called the Players Ball. Remember that? Yeah. So I'm at the Players Ball. And then Puffy comes to me at the Players Ball because Mary J. Blige, Mary J. Blige's My Life album is out that same weekend. Okay. And he approaches me and says, hey, why don't you come on the road with Big? So I'm looking really? at him. Really? Yeah. So I'm looking at him like. That came through Puff? Came through Puff. Why you? Again. I don't know. But he asked. He asked I, I'll you. tell you why. But You um, want to know why? So he I'll asked. Tell I'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> so he asked me and I said, all right, I'll think about it. Now, to keep in mind. Biggie only has party and bullshit out, yeah. maybe juicy, maybe mm. unbelievable. That's it. He's like not the R&B super, remix, yeah. He's not the superstar king yet. Right. right he's right. on his way. He has a big buzz. The buzz is big, though. He's big. Like, he's big. Buzz he's big. buzzing. But in my mind, yeah, but, but so I'm thinking I'm Hollywood. I'm yeah. I'm the kid no longer local. I just got my shot. I'm on Kiss FM radio. I'm the fucking guy now. This yeah. is my shot. So I don't know if I want to work for, yeah. for the B.I.G. yet. I don't know. I'm really thinking about it. And then I talked to a few heads. He's like, ah, just do it. If you believe in him, you think he's... I said, I think he's dope. I think he has something. But are, you already knew Puffy from doing parties I and stuff. I knew Puffy from parties. And Biggie I knew from... There was a party on 13th Street and between Park and Broadway. It might have been Suede. But prior to Suede, it was the, pink, the Pussy Cat Club or Cat Club. Where the movie theater is at, right across the street. No, I know the I know Suede. I know but Suede. Before that, yeah, before it was that, called no. the Pink Pussycat Club yeah. or something like that. Anyway, this is a it was a predominantly white party that were playing soulful music at the time. And it wasn't like Soul Kitchen or like that, but it was very similar to it. And Biggie was trying to get into the party. And um he didn't have no ends. Him and M O P. I'm the DJ who has to connect in the plug. I know the guys, I know oh. the promo dudes. Let's go to the white party. Like, oh. Yo, my man. This guy's Biggie Smalls. He just got signed to Puff's new label. He's at Uptown MCA. And I remember specifically saying Uptown MCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Right? This is before Arista, before Bad Boy. Yeah. This is Uptown MCA. And I was like, I promise he's not going to talk no shit. He's a good guy. He just wants to come and have a good time. This is some good music. So I co-signed him, and he just loved me from that day on. Dude, what about the other two guys? Right? Those guys might kill you. <laughs> Who, the MOP dudes? Yeah, fame and dance. Oh, talk, talk, I'm talk, not talk, too sure about those guys, <laughs> but... It was like a, a Carl Kanai hoodie fest. It was like Brooklyn. Uh, I'm sorry. Fame that told him about Pop from the barbershop. Is, is that who Simon? He says that? Yeah. Yes. He's yes. talking about Fame? Yeah. Him yeah. and Fame were like this. Yeah. They were that close? Yes, sir. 
Fame and um and Biggie was super close with um uh the the Smith Smith and Wesson guy. The Texas tech. Tech. Oh yeah. wow. They're all tight. They're all tight. Yeah. So so you get them into the club and that was how you got to know Biggie. It's just love. And then the I met him prior because me and Cap DJ'd Biggie's single release party for Party and Bullshit. Mm. And that was through Jessica Rosenblum also. The rest of these oh, Big Cat. Yo, yo, I just want everyone to stop. Let's and pause. then I got the cassette from Big at the at the party. Which, which yo, cassette? This, ready to Die. Yo, this is my album. I need you to do whatever you want with it and let everybody know it's coming. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I do? What do you do? I go to Kiss FM Radio and I get that bitch cleaned up and we play it on the radio. Wow. And then the warm line. Doo, 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 doo. I'm like, oh shit, the warm line. And then I'm like, I'm not paying no mind. Then the hotline. Doo, 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 doo. I'm <laughs> like, oh shit, I gotta pick that up. It could be the boss. I pick it up, it's puffy. What the fuck are you doing? Playing my B.I.G. shit. I'll fucking kill you. It sounds like puff. So I'm like, <laughs> now this is this is early DJ enough who doesn't understand a marketing plan or yeah. a single rollout, whatever monies you put into laying out your shit, the merch. Had, yeah, pu- apparently Biggie didn't understand that either. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, he didn't. And he didn't give a fuck. Biggie was just yeah. happy to, his course. album was c- complete. Here, yeah. take my shit. I love yeah. you. Have a great time with it, Brooklyn. Yeah. So I get a fucking earful from, and this is why it's baffling to me because you said, out of all the DJs, why you? Right? Yeah. Why did Puffy come to me after he cursed me out? Right. So I'm thinking, I don't have no relationship with Puff. This guy hates me right yeah. now. And then a couple of weeks later, he, the same guy who hates me asks me to become Big's DJ oh, and crazy. go on a roll with him. So you decided to do it? I decided to do it. First show, Washington, D.C. Let's go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where, what, what venue, you remember? I don't know. Hotels. Wait, how was, the, how was the rehearsal? No rehearsal. <laughs> I know. No fucking I rehearsal. Know. Never. None. Never. No rehearsal. How was the meeting? How was the big meeting where you broke everything <laughs> the down? Was in the white passenger Nothing. van. It was a white piece of paper, <laughs> and they wrote the songs, and they gave me the paper, and that's it. That was my whatever. I think I might have talked to Clark Kent, because Clark Kent was the DJ prior. So, oh, so, right, right. Wait, so why'd they move on from Clark Kent then? Because Clark Kent was very busy. And he started to become the A&R oh, pr- and producing, he producing records. Right. But he had Jay-Z signed to. He, he started to be the A&R. Right, right. Then he was doing shit at East West. Right, right, right. He just came out of doing Original Flavor, a bunch of shit. He was busy. So so first gig is at a hotel in D.C. Yeah. Shootout. Bah, 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 bah. Come on. Outside before the show. Not at the show. Did the show outside. happen still? The show still happened. But I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm on my way to the show. I'm carrying vinyl, a vinyl bag. And... I take the wrong two copies of Roger and Zap, uh, Computer Love, because I need it for me and my bitch when I'm cutting. You were already doing, you guys uh, already, he, you guys did the, uh, that yeah. was always from the beginning, early on. I mean, yeah, because remember I told you, I, I learned from Clark. So if Clark, Clark had some dope remixes of Biggie's performances before anybody came to do any remixes. And it was like, you know, like the Al B. Shore sample into... Uh, was it one more chance? Like there was a bunch of versions that he had. That right. Like, Yo, I need that, bro. He never gave them to me, but it was just amazing how he. he so the, the the computer love was a thing, and I remember having that on album only. Oh uh, no, you had to play and it off the the so, full album. So I had to play it off the full greatest hits album, and I had and it was horrible because it's like low quality. Yeah. You know about albums, y'all. Yeah, you don't want to play are, off an album. Albums are on low quality, and low volume. Like, <laughs> uh, Oh, you could, you, and you can't miss that. You, oh, can't, you can't miss that scratch. You gotta be, or you'll end well, up like you. you'll end up like Big Cap having it. Biggie throw shit <laughs> well, at you. Oh, yeah, that, that was the worst. Bro. That we'll was get the there. Worst. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll talk about that. Okay, so, <laughs> so, um, so you do the DC show. Do you remember what, what? What? So it was all just the early album stuff. Yes, sir. And was the it, album was out? No, the album wasn't even out yet. No, the album was out already. Okay. By, the, by the time I, you got on the road, with by him. the time on, on the road, unbelievable was out. Juicy was out. I think one more chance was just on the so he's So he's buzzing. And then around, yeah, I got to see Big Papa become the new single. Right. right. By the time Big Papa dropped, that's when the world, uh, to me, fully came yeah. to, to, like, Biggie's here. Yeah. Because, remember, this is like, I don't know I don't know if the beef started, but it was the Biggie and the Pac shit. Well, it's starting, because who shot you on the single was, for, for, it was, for it was, Big Papa? It was happening. And I remember specifically us going to like certain neighborhoods, especially like Detroit, the mad Tupac fans in Detroit. 
And then it's like, you know, like you perform and it's like the twos are up everywhere. Yeah. You know, we're performing, getting money. People are throwing quarters at us. It's just weird. It's just weird. The vibe is just weird. Because Pac, I don't care what nobody says, Pac fans were cult, cult yeah. Pac fans. Like, it was a whole different kind of fanship. Yeah, that's not the Biggie fanship. No. It's not, it's it wasn't a, cultish. It's a, it's a whole he was just so thing. cool. Like, everyone just fucking loved Biggie him. Biggie was party time. Yeah. It was par- Exactly. Oh, nah, you, he might be your favorite, yeah, but it wasn't nah, cult-like. Pac yeah. fans were a, a different kind of breed. Yeah. They were almost like football fans. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's a good you know, like, he was, yeah. like, he was their team. Like, yeah, 100%. You just mentioned the Big Papa single. Yes, sir. So, obviously, and, and you said that stuff was already getting weird with, uh, with Tupac. Yes, sir. Were you around for Who Shot You? Yes. For the recording? No. Because I remember, do you remember the first version I heard of it was on a nasty bootleg and it didn't have any of the as we proceed, any Nothing. of the puff. Nothing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I never heard that. Oh, it's just nasty. I don't, I don't remember that. Really? No. It's literally just the dun dun. It just sounded like the De La shit. You. you remember how De La yeah. used it first? Yeah. It sounded much more like that. No Ugh. puffy, very basic. Right. And then by the time it came out for real, for real on single, it obviously had a, a a bigger impact. Like, did you know at the time that was going to be a big deal? Who shot you? No. It was just like, this is a B-side underground. That's it. Yeah. Some street shit. Wait, yeah. did you hang with Biggie besides shows? A little bit. Not, a Not lot. much, right? Not a lot. Cause Cause I, didn't did like, you go- I didn't like hanging out with the... With the with the mafia? The mafia. No, not that. It was it wasn't them. It was just like you gotta remember, look, the Brooklyn that I remember back in those days was a, a rougher, harder yeah. Brooklyn. And it wasn't always safe to be out True. by itself. You know, and, like 'cause like did you ever go to the studio with Big? Yeah. The only the only sessions I saw was I was at Daddy's house when he was recording Play a Hater, when he performed More Money, More Problems. That's a good one to be around. That's kind of historic. Yo, but the crazy thing is when I heard more money, more problems being chopped, I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, in my mind. Oh, and then yeah. when you hear the song done, you're yeah. like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. But when it I is heard a weird it for the chop. first time, I'm yeah. like, this is fucking weird. This is not, not, this is not gonna win. Yeah. But it actually went. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. Wait, and and um what about uh oh wait, didn't you do get money too? You did no, get money I, remix. I did get money remix. Well, don't, don't 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 poo-poo that. I would say the get I'm money poo-poo Okay, it. good. The get money remix like is it. almost as big as get money original. I mean, no, it, my point I mean, was it pushed it to to platinum status. I know that. It did. Sure. Yes, 100%. My point was that what I I don't know if you guys know this. I used to DJ for Little Kim. Wow. In Junior Mafia. <laughs> Amazing. But I never got invited to anything outside a show. Cuz you're never. a loser. I'm a loser, right? No, it, I definitely was way more Raucousy yeah. underground that he right. enough was, was cool. He definitely was. Like when enough got down with Biggie, and he was from Brooklyn, so he was already in the Brooklyn club, and he was way cooler. Well, and by the way, he, he was he was having a drink, smoking cigarettes. Sife was yeah, doing nothing. I was, a, yeah. nothing. I was a fucking loser. Sife was a fucking square. Well, I, I never got invited. To, like I remember, we would do a show, and then they were gonna go shoot the um, the Crush on You video. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to get to go to... V-. My that plane was ticket at, uh, that was, was sent S-O. home. That was at S.O.'s. <laughs> you, know, like, you, you, you were there? No. You weren't a crush no, on you I either? Went, I went, but I, I wasn't in the video, but I was there. No, they, they it was just to invite me. You just look, you look around, you be a... Then before you know it, you're like, you know what? I'm in the way. Let me get the fuck out of here. So it's yeah. a really, this is really interesting because... <laughs> Let's just be real. Everyone loves to talk about the DJ's the backbone. Mm-hmm. But... In a lot of nah. situations, the DJ for the artist is in an annoying, shitty, overlooked, unglorious. It is. Yo, you could be. Oh, you on the road with Little Kim? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, you could be DJing right now. There's someone out there who's DJing for one of the biggest artists in the world right now. No one knows who the fuck he is. Yeah. No one cares. He has to carry the equipment. Oh, he has to make sure when you leave. Care. Your own team's leaving yeah. without you. Dog, I remember le- being in Virginia. It was a, a fucking all-out brawl, a big fight. They left, they left me with two turntables, yeah. a mixer, four crates of records by myself. Yep. I've been there. By myself, bro. So I'm packing up while everybody's throwing haymakers and fighting and knives are being pulled and bottles are being broken. And I'm by myself packing up. Little old me. <laughs> it's crazy. Did you give when uh, when Quiz went out with G Easy? Did you give him any advice? Yeah, I said don't do it, but, uh, he, <laughs> but he did it. But he did it. He did it. He did. He did. It. Nah, you got. Why would you say don't do it? I mean, it was just at the time. I mean, but you know, I didn't. He know ended what, up getting a good run out of it. No, he got a great run out of it, and then he actually toured the whole entire world. Yeah, he's done nah, the whole world with G. No, that's a whole different thing. Man. But you know, we know all the downsides to it. But as a young DJ, it's so fun. Yeah, but you man. know what? You're not. You're not. You're not realizing 
that you're making history while you're going through the yeah, history. Yeah, of course. Well, not, bro. You're just living it. You're living your everyday life. Yeah. So, you're not realizing that you're making history. So when you so how did how did Get Money Remix come about then? All right. So me and my man Jiv. Jiv was from 39th and Glenwood. Jiv Poss. Yeah, Jiv. Jiv was Jiv, oh. Jiv used to also GJ for Little Kim too. After Cypher. Wow, really? After? Yeah, I think after. Or maybe before. Either or. Maybe no, after. Was I was first. He was wrong. As yeah. soon as she did her solo out of Junior Mafia, I was first. Uh, but you're right, yeah. He was there too. And I remember, oh, yeah. I remember Biggie used to clown me. Like, oh, we're already doing a show for Junior Mafia. And you think that's going to go well? Wait, wait, why? Wait, 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 why? He would clown us. Wait, wait, why? But it's his crew. Wait, I know, but it don't make a difference. It's like wait, hold on. when hold Kim on. and C's would reach out to me to do, you know, we got a little show or something. Without and big, without big, and they would ask and you to big do would DJ. laugh like, "Oh, you think that's gonna work out?" <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I remember doing my first show with them. We were in Miami somewhere, and it was literally like Kim and Lil C's hiding underneath the, ta- the, the 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 tables. Oh, I heard about that. And it wasn't wait, why? Why were they big, hiding? No, we're we're not in Miami, Miami. Like, yeah, we're in, the we're, hood. in we're in like the hood of Miami. This is not the Miami Beach that everyone knows. And right, this isn't Gloria, this like is glamorous. Not, no, 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 no. We're in the hood, and. They didn't want to hear anything except the hits. But they only had one hit. They had only get money. No, two. Two plays at them. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But it wasn't enough to, to, uh, to do a whole, whole show. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah, yeah. And how long were you slated to do? Were like 30 minutes? At least half an hour to 45 minutes. You know, <laughs> so you're there trying to do that with two songs. It's, it's kind of hard. Yeah. It's very rough. By the way, artists, if any artists are listening, that's a note to, to you. If you have one song to play... Don't agree to 30 minute sets. Yeah. I did it. What do you mean? I did it with Nina Sky, bro. We, we made, made a fucking. How'd you do it? We, man, we would just do but you covers. Guys, but you guys were also creative, and that's where your DJ input. Yeah, and it was also more. not, it was two girls singing. It wasn't like hip, uh, grimy hip hop. You know right, right, right. Yeah. It's a little easier, but you can make it work. You do a little DJ shit, you do some crowd participation. A cover, a cover shit, of something they know. Cover something, 100%, 100%. remix. But, but Kim and C's weren't doing okay, that. Okay, so this time. is. That's, not so yet. Biggie, not yet. you did the whole Biggie run. Right. Then he puts out Junior Mafia. No one even really realized there was a difference. It was just another Biggie song with right. Kim and C's on it. So that's Players Anthem and then Get Money, which is crazy big. Right. Get Money. I remember but the first this is, time. So I'm going to tell you the real. But the, was Biggie so, doing Junior Mafia shows? He A little bit here and there. The ones that he wanted to do. Unless it, there was a good bag or whatever. Got like it. he took he took them to, to went to Amsterdam and Rotterdam with Junior Mafia. Yeah. That I remember. And, then, and he went. Yeah. The headliners were Coolio. And met the man. We open. We were openers for them. That's crazy. And I remember specifically like Meth and Coolio getting 45, 35 G's. I think we were probably only getting like five or ten racks back then. Wow. And it's just crazy the way the world turned. And then years later, Biggie ended up becoming the big, the big guy. What do you think? Jumping ahead for a second, but I'm gonna jump back. What do you think Biggie's biggest bag ever was performing? I know. I know. I don't know. You know? I don't know. It can't be more than fifty. Why? Because I remember being with C's. When before, right before Ready, um, Life After Death came out, mm-hmm. and he was like, Yo, we got this whole idea, right? We're gonna do this show. Uh, who was the choreographer, the big, um, that had the TV show later on? She was like, oh, Leslie, not, not, or not the, not, uh, Debbie Allen. No, no. Not the... <laughs> you talking about uh, Tana- Tanisha? No, not her, before uh, her. Le- Leslie or Le- Leslie was part of B. Uh, was part no, of it was a, was part it's of another B. famous choreographer. Anyway, whatever. Okay. She was helping Biggie do choreography, but not dancing. Like to help him work. Like when the song starts, you're on this part of the stage, and when you get to your verse, you're on this part. She was putting the show together, right? Okay. And then C's was like, "Yo, we rehearsing, and um, yo, yo we gonna try to get like we gonna get like seventy thousand. Right, and at the time I was like seventy thousand. That like now rappers get seventy thousand in a club, right? right? Like certain rappers, like the right. Migos, could get seventy thousand yeah. on a walkthrough. Right? Yeah. But back then, he said he's like he's like big, he's like Big's number. We're gonna get like seventy. Yeah. Right, which means before that, the highest had to be fifty. So he never, like they never got seventy. And they never and got, 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 got killed. And Big got killed before. But he was like the number. I remember it was like seventy. And I was like, that's amazing. Because I remember Kim sometimes would get like thirty. And I was like, "Oh my god!" That's and how much would you get? It? How much you get? It? Huh? Well, like one percent. <laughs> <laughs> but she was getting thirty sometimes, and that was huge. Okay, so we we got we we got distracted. So get money mm-hmm. comes out, it gets right. huge. You know how it starts? Yeah. So 
the hottest mixtapes were popping in, in our vehicle all the time. If I didn't have a mixtape available, we went to this, whatever was cracking. And Doo Wop 95 Live. Live Part 2 yeah. mm-hmm. was out. And somebody was rapping on Dennis Edwards. Oh, yes. Um, wow. uh, don't look any further. Don't look any further. So who rapped on it? I forgot. But Biggie heard it. I think it was like, Keith Murray talking about Foxy been. Brown giving him a head. <laughs> it was just amazing. And then Big was like, yo, e, you think you can flip that? I said, of course. Ooh, let's flip that. So then we flipped it, and then came out to get money remix. How long between he asked you that and before they recorded it? Maybe a weekend. That's and crazy. That's how thirsty we were. And then we were recording at Hit Factory back then. But you so did it with we did it with Jiv Pass. Yes, me and Jiv. I remember he we went to the basement with the Jiv, and we started we started Jim's basement, and we started man. look we started chopping up Dennis Edwards so much because look back in those producer days we weren't trying to jack records we were yeah. trying to live, we were trying to be, flip them flip them right and then Biggie was like Nah man we're not doing that I said what do you mean <laughs> remember he's Puff's guy so yeah. Puff's used to jacking everything right? Shay Jack he yeah. goes dog we're gonna have to clear the sample anyway right so just take the shit. So then I, it went from the, the, the echoes and the chopping yeah. to just give me a couple of good loops and a couple Oops, of and bridges. You put the dope drums, drums to it, though. That's it. That's and it. when you hear it, yeah, I'm playing it right now if you guys want to hear it. And when you hear it, you didn't do that much. No, that much. We just add some shakers to it, and that's it. But the only thing with that I would have done differently to this day, I added too much filter. You, you added too much filter? Yeah. Wait, what was filtered? Like you hear that, you hear that background. It's like muffled. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, the bass line. Yeah. So when you hear it in a big sound system, it sounds very bassy and woofy. And I would have changed some of the 808s. Who made That's the genius it. decision to leave in this initial ad lib for when he starts the oh, uh, that, oh. that shit? This is what makes the song to me. Here we go. Oh. Oh. I just want everybody to know I'm, I'm, I'm proud to admit who I am as a human being. Yeah. I never heard this song on God's green earth until until Get Money Remix. Really? Never. Oh, yeah. We, we have this long... We have many discussions about he doesn't know about like black barbecue music. Yeah, no? I don't know, you know that. I mean? Yo, he don't know those songs. He didn't know Juicy he's was from, like... He's from Maryland. They got that over there. Yeah, he, was, he wasn't hanging out with them. See the difference? They see how heavy it sounds? Yeah. Yeah, but, but hey, this was a banger, though. And the best part to me at the time, because I'm working at the radio station, when he goes, I'm Hot 97, Rob, I'm ready. I'm like, yes! <laughs> I'm like, yes! Was that... Were you there when you recorded it? No. Oh, the, a story just came out recently. Yeah. C's was on Math Hoffa. And he was talking about how big... Wrote the rhymes for for C's obviously. Oh, yeah. C's says he didn't right. rap, and Big, but he was saying how much like Biggie like looked out for him. Yeah, he stood in the studio four hours writing his 100%, 100%. verse. Hundred percent, C's verse. He really killed this too. All that and a bottle of Dom P. Niggas can't harm me. I peep an army. It's Brooklyn in the house. Without a doubt, I'm the rapper with clout. Everybody yap about. Check it out. Guns I bust them. Problems with my wife. Don't discuss them. Coops and lead jets. I lust them. Fingerprints on dust. Visa address. What? Stuck you for your stash in your pissy mattress. Oh. Your mom's an actress, didn't want to show me the safe. It's, it's okay. okay, she was on anyway. I just right here, hot, hot 97, round ready. ready. Cock Mac 11 line steady. Let's go. Uh, like the timing. Tech, well, I'm ready uh. to do what I do continuously. Yeah, the, timing the timing of Hot 97 and Biggie converging is, uh, is fucking it's priceless. Amazing. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Wait, let me see your. What is that? What are you playing that on? Spotify? Let me look for something. Okay. Um, I love how fucked up the line is. I didn't even dawn on me till recently how fucked up it is that he says it's okay. She was old anyway. Yeah, it's okay. She's like, like he nah, sell. He, yeah. I had to kill her, but don't yeah. worry, she's old. It didn't even matter. <laughs> so, do you re- can you like visualize and actually picture him doing that record? Like you remember? Yeah. The actual I session. That. I remember that we were. It was a lot of food, weed everywhere. Everyone said that. it was. Was it really a party a lot when you a did lot. shit? Yeah, but think about it. Girls around too. Look, look who his friend is. Oh, his crew is it's Junior right. Mafia, so he's always with the Mafia. Yeah, and then you got uh, Wayne Barrow, Mark Pitts, uh, those guys. Would Hulk Puff G. be around or no? Puff would pop in once in a while. How uh, how often was Puff around generally? Um, only for big shit, right? Um, I think only for the big stuff. You know, that was other parties to break my heart. So we do. I tour around the whole entire world with Big, and then when we come back to do our New York shows, he take me off the bill and yeah. put Clark. Oh, back. oh. 
And I We're be, the same and guy. I be, and I'd be pissed as hell. Yo, Clark, you piece of sh- Clark was a fucking, we would come back to New York shows and yeah. they would get Clark to do them. Yeah. And we're like, I was just with you in fucking scumbag Mississippi <laughs> and I don't get to do the New York shows? Yeah, it was, it was Fuck crazy. that, man. Yo, you guys crazy. both had the exact <laughs> same shit and it was Clark for both of you? No, so, because it was Puff, because it was Puff, no, I for both. No. Clark was the bigger DJ. Right. I'm clear. At, now at this point, I'm clear. Yes. But back then, living through it, I was pissed. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I went through shootouts with these guys. Right. I went exactly. through fist fights and fights, and we're missing flights and tour buses, and the tour bus breaking down, and people died that year. Like, and I can't do the Apollo show. Are you kidding right, right. me? Right. I can't do Man. the Apollo. It was like, what the fuck? You, did you do? Um, did you do the show in the movie The Show? No. That was Clark. Let me go. It's Clark Kent one, one time. time. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Navy gets the ad lib uh, on it. And that ends up on the soundtrack, uh, too. Yeah, on the show soundtrack. When I met you. Yeah. Were you tight about that? No. That one would have gotten no, me tight. I wasn't tight. No, but not that. doing the New York shows. Was because that was movie. that was done way before I was even around. Oh, really? That was way. Yeah, it was done. Was pre- that was just when Clark was still DJing yeah, for him. Yeah, 100%. Before. So you and Big didn't like hang out socially a lot. Not but that, much. But it was. But, but also, you, he was a kid. Right, Big was way younger than you. Right? Oh yeah, Big's pretty, yeah. And Junior Big, Mafia, like Big was like three, four years younger. than And me. C, I mean, C's was like 12. seven years younger than you. Like, yeah. so um, did you? What did? You, how did? How do you like think of your relationship with him? I think from a professional standpoint, it was incredible because I know I uh, I wasn't there for him all the time because we alternated as disc jockeys during that era. Like there would be some weeks Cap would go, and some weeks I would go. Yeah. So I was double booked on two tours. I was on the show tour with Def Jam, and then I was on um, Biggie's tours. You know, so I kind of rotated back and forth with those tours. Who was on the show tour? It was uh, Foxy Brown, uh, Keith Murray, J- Jimmy Henchman, <laughs> Jimmy Henchman, Jimmy Henchman, yeah, Jimmy Henchman, and he had a Bulletproof Love record with some girl named Is it Shanice? Shanice? I didn't even know. I don't know Jimmy Henchman at records. Yeah. He, well, he was a, he had a, a label or something. Uh, it was uh, Ghostface, Raekwon, uh, Onyx. Was that on it? Some of the Onyx guys were on there. Uh, damn, who else? So was it wasn't meth, really meth and red. Meth, meth, oh yeah, that makes sense. Meth and red, and I'm missing somebody else. Is there any worse? You were the DJ for the tour. For the tour, not for each artist. No, I was just like I was like the DJ, hype it DJ up, DJ enough who would just be doing his thing between right, that. Go between, yeah. Is yeah. there any worse sound? Is it? You guys might totally disagree, and knowing Sypho will be like, I like that version better. But for me, is there anything worse than when you're going through your Serato? Sypho never happened, also, he's too organized. And you hit How High, and it's the regular version. <laughs> Bro, do I. You probably love the reg- original version. I, only because I saw Do play it, not by mistake. Like, he played the regular one, and it hit. It hit the, and I was hit. like, oh, shit. Like, it's it does like hit for street. some people. Yeah, I mean, this is a long time ago, but yeah. Cause, cause that fly Robin fly was yeah, like such was fly, magic. Yeah, that's fly. It was. Um, so, so you said professionally, you consider it great. Yeah, because I remember. Okay, so remember I told you we went back and forth on these different tours, and then it was a few weeks I wasn't on the road with him, and I came back to New York to go to a vibe party. He's at this vibe party, so Big in his dip silks and Versace clothes and gaiters, whatever he just happens to have on gets on his hands and knees at the vibe party begging for me to go back on the road with him. So I felt like, oh, I'm, I'm the man. Oh, no, but let's, but Wait, hold on. Like, he literally, he, he did it like he put on a show for you? Like he really yes, wanted you to? Yes, Like, brother, please, you got to come back on the road with me, please. But were you yeah. not on the road with him? No, I wasn't on the road with him at oh. the time. I was kind of like on and off. I was like. Are, are you like, able, but are you able to really process even now all these years later because it was your life that literally – the most important, I'm sorry, I would say the most important figure maybe ever in hip-hop, jokingly got on his hands yeah. and knees to beg you to go. Do, like, that would be like yeah. someone having a story of, like, Elvis got down and begged me to be play lead yeah, guitar. You know crazy. what I mean? Yeah, that's that's fucking that's, insane. But Big Cap was not a good DJ as far as, do you, like. Do you add the word respectfully? I no, love, I know what it is. No, no, Big Cap was a great DJ. From, I didn't finish from, my uh, sentence. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. For like for being an artist DJ to be like organized right. and fucking he wasn't a technical DJ. Rowdy right. DJ, he would rock because he knew yeah. all the records to play, even though they were scratched up. He treat and he, he had just, a voice. He had a voice. Oh, this voice. Aye, aye. 
But but yeah, as a <laughs> like like the whole the if you don't know what we're talking about, there's a video of Biggie doing like a summer jam in like the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and Caps Records kept. Skipping. skipping. By the way, it was hot. The record was melt. Wasn't the were the records melting? Yes, but also he did not keep good care of his records. Right. He, he never put his pile, records back in his sleeve. He just have a pile like never. this of non covered records. I'm gonna tell you one thing that Syphus, I believe, and I'm I'm guessing, but I believe Syph enough and myself all have in common as DJs. We're clean. We're not shoving records not in a jacket properly. No. Like, my records are going in the white sleeve. Me too. Yeah. I'm not sticking them. People would take doubles and stick them both outside no, the white no, sleeve. No, yeah. no, You're getting, if I stick two records in one jacket, the they're both in the, in the white sleeve. In or they're between. both in the white sleeve. In between. Oh. I'll, do, I'll do one in you between. You would do between? Yeah, yeah I'll do, I'll do between. one. I would just stick between. both white sleeves in the one oh, jacket. That's crazy. Because yeah. I wanted the white sleeve to protect it. Because otherwise, you're on stage and it's skipping, and now Biggie's throwing shit at you. <laughs> what at you? <laughs> Biggie's getting the crowd to boo you. Yeah. Yo, was Cap, was, was, do you guys know, was Cap actually tight about that? Or did, was he just was he just part of their relationship? I don't know. I think they left him in the airport on purpose one time. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did leave him in the airport. Yeah. But he didn't care. He's, he's, he's Cap. He's he smoked weed. So, so Biggie was a bit of a, uh, a prankster also. 100%. Shit talker, prankster, 100%. fucking with you. 100%. Did you ever get fucked with on the road? One time. What happened? Cleveland, Ohio. We do a show at the water. There's a, a marina. The boats pull up at the show. And I do, I think it's either, I think it's I shot uh, who shot you or some other record skips. Okay. At this time, I'm doing the show only on vinyl. Okay. All and and these are this is strict vinyl. You would get test presses of the album no, instrumentals. We just, we just had instrumentals. But album instrumentals. The stuff, stuff was out. Yeah. So you the have singles. The stuff was out. These were oh, singles. Oh, all singles. Yeah. There okay. was no special version. But anyway, okay, I'll sing. the 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 stage was was made of these cubes. It wasn't like a straight up stage and the, the cubes was supposed to be so that if something was bouncing or uneasy it wouldn't give vibration to the turntables or the yeah, yeah. setup. Biggie was 500 plus okay <laughs> when he walked on the stage he shook the stage <laughs> but I'm the disc jockey Biggie can't get blamed for the fucking music skin skip I'm responsible for yeah. that so he told me if I don't get my shit together he's docking me $500 every time for my pay so I'm like oh <laughs> shit <laughs> And that was that was the way he did it. But the first time was James Brown the style. first time he did it was on stage, like you know, like the, 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 like the crowd is booing and they were like, "Boo that motherfucker!" That's so the he, reason so, why. So you got the exact same treatment that Cap got a little bit, at least and once. Me. But one time, and one time only. It never after that. I, I Clark Kent taught me a, a trick. He said, "Pre-record the show on that, and just have it." So if you're ever in a, in a sticky situation, just play the back. Yeah, so if the setup is one that you know is going to be skippy. Yes, yes. Look, brother, I didn't have the instant replay machine out at the time. Right. Um, they had it, but I wasn't bringing it out at the time. Uh, CDJs were available, but I didn't have no CDJ controller. So a skip is a skip. You're that's, fucked. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. Serato wasn't out then. <laughs> Wait, but I love this idea, though, that Biggie gets on stage. He's the reason it skips. Yeah. And you have to get booed by the crowd. And I got to get booed by the crowd. Yo, yeah. everybody say, fuck the DJ. And I was like, I came with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not some local guy you just picked up at the airport. Wait, enough. What's the story of some kind of beef or a shootout or something? And then you did you lose your passport? Okay, we had a big fight somewhere. I forgot what city. We all lost our passports. Mm. Um, and I know this for a fact because the lawyers had contacted us. Right, right. That's to, how they found they you. They were trying to get us to pay some money or something. Yeah. Or they were trying to sue us, but I ain't paying no mind. Well, you lost your passport, so did you have to rent a car or drive out or something? Um, no, I lost my passport. And we were domestically in the states, so it wasn't oh, like, oh, I, not, it wasn't like it was a, oh, but that's how they found you for the lawsuit. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. I have an I have a real dilemma right now, yeah. and I need your feedback. So, okay. It's it's we're currently we're currently twenty three minutes away from the hard time that you guys said you yeah. had to go. Yes. Twenty three minutes. I know what you're gonna say. Where do we go? Do we do we just say we are definitely gonna do this again and like set a date in a couple of weeks? I don't Whatever know. Whatever you want. Oh, mind you. Anytime we've ever said we're going to do we, part we two. We never do we've it. We've never done it. 
So it's like, like we would, to be continued, and then the show just gets canceled. I'm very professional, bro. Uh, I know you is are. Is that your fault? Are you having fun? Would you want to do this more? 100%. So if we said literally we're going to do this again in two weeks I'm down. and pick it back up, I'm like down. on a Friday, maybe again. I'm down. Because here's the thing. We, I want to get back to those flex stories and the pit bulls. Yeah, and so many. And we haven't mentioned the name Kanye West has not come up Yeah, we're, we're still in 95. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're still in 95. Bro, I remember I uh, they they... I remember, I wanna, I'm not going to tell you right now, I'll tell you part two, when Tracy came in to Flex's show, and I was there, and she said she was wanted to hire DJ Enough. She, I know that story. And she asked if, if you guys knew me. <laughs> and then I remember going to a party. Now, I came, through, I came through the DJ Riz camp, and then I was Funk Flex Big Cap World, which two very different styles of DJing. And I went to a party on 14th King Street. 14th. Yes, sir. And I went and, and I saw DJ and Enough. 14th and 9th. Yes. And I heard Enough play and I was like, what is this? What style is this? And then the most important thing about it was he was having so much fun. Mm -hmm. Riz, I don't think Riz smiled ever. I never saw Riz smile in my life. Riz was a... Riz is AI before AI. Yeah. Riz is a fucking DJ robot that every second of every beat of every was on point. And then Cap was just <laughs> sloppy, right, right, right. but fire for but the streets. Still. And Flex was like, how, yo, I got to. Flex taught me how to turn the lights of the DJ booth onto your face because you have to be seen, right? So it's a different stuff. But Enough was rocking and having so much fun. Throw some salsa on, throw some house. And by the way, Enough is a super, for anyone listening, not from New York. Enough is a super fucking clean DJ, clean. too. It's clean. Thank you, guys. Every DJ has a, a signature scratch. Like, you have a signature with your name. I can tell who's DJing by the scratches. The cuts and scratches. That's the dope. That's dope. When I used to fill in for Flex, I mastered copying his scratches. Oh, me? I used to... Uh, so people didn't know it was... It was me. Oh, really? I used to copy Flex and Scratches because everything I did was copy Flex. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do except to copy Funk Master Flex. We talked about Get Money Remix. Mm -hmm. You also did your Nobody Till Somebody Kills You originally. Yes, sir. You don't have the credit on the album, though, right? Yeah, well, I do. You do have full credit? Co-producer. Yes, Co-producer. Yeah. With Puff? Yes. Um, and Stevie J. And Stevie and J. And Derek D. Angeletti and Faith Evans, <laughs> myself, and Jiv. That's the way it went back in the days. Yeah. If you wanted to be on the album, if you didn't take it, and they would leave it. That's so who it really did the record hands-on? You and Jiv? Me and Jiv. No, but there's a, the, the version they did, I, I remember I went to Jiv. Oh, because there's an original. Yeah, there's, there's, there's original, two. There's both mixes. There's original, I went to Jiv's there's original studio Billy, in the Billy, basement. Billy Preston sample. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at the time, Billy wanted more than, I think the Biggie estate was willing to... Cough up? Yep. So then I think D-Dot and Stevie J and them... Replayed everything, which just bended the rules a little bit, mm -hmm. gave it a different sound, but it still ended up. It's still the generally the yeah. same song, yeah, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. So if you were saying, no, I went to Jiv's studio. Jiv, actually, now I'm thinking about Jiv taught me a lot how to use the MPC. Like when I wanted to yeah. learn how to produce, he was like, "Come to the come to the crib, and I'll show you how to do it." And then he played me that beat, but it was like way harder than and the it one. Was, that's it on was the very album. sad. I'm a big hearing. They was like, "You hear how sad that sounds." I was like, I love this. That's crazy. And I was like, wow. Yeah. He was like, enough. We're going to make some money together. I'm ready. And I was like, yes, I'm going to win. But then he dies. Yeah, he <laughs> fucking dies. He destroys my... Were you going to Were you gonna DJ for him for the second album? Supposed to be, yeah. Wow. They, have that. they talked about like us wearing suits and then him... Like coming out of the coffin. That's what I'm telling you. That's yeah. what the lady who's yeah. choreograph yeah. choreographing it. Chore mm -hmm. Choreographing it. That's right. There you go. They so we got they it. We were sure. talking about all that stuff way, way, yeah. way in advance. Yeah. So, so how fucked up were you off of his death? I was, I was bad. I almost quit everything. I was literally in the handball courts where I grew up in Brooklyn. Smoking weed, drinking beer, like 11 a.m. in the morning. Just sitting Damn. there. Sitting there doing nothing. And blaming it all on hip hop, you know what I mean. Right. Instead of life, but just blaming it all on hip hop. I wanted no parts of it. I was just tired. Shit. Was, was it? What, what a weird experience to mourn the death of someone you know, mm -hmm. as the entire world is mourning the death of who to them is essentially just a celebrity. Yeah. That was that a weird experience? Because everyone's talking about no. it. And you're like, no, that's my man. Though. It's nuts because I remember telling D Rock, 
I was like, D-Rock, please take care of him. Because the death threats were real. All that stuff that you hear in the documentaries and all the, the tales. Yeah. People calling up and hanging up. and That stuff was real. Really? Yeah, so because that stuff was happening on a regular basis. Wait, um, that's what the skit on the album is like. Yeah. Somebody calling and yes. saying, I'm going to kill you, but he yes. made it funny. Yes, 100%. But I told D-Rock, yo, please take care of him. And I remember them saying, yo, we're going out to L.A. I'm like, no, man, that's, how is this a good yeah. idea? Yeah. I'm like, just the past six months ago, a year ago, Pac died. Yeah. And then they're still blaming you for that. Like, where we go? Why? Why would you want to go to L.A. and and party? But Puff was like, you know what? We got the Soul Train Awards. We're, we're finishing the album. We're just going to go out there and party and just celebrate the album being done. Well, and Big had obviously already done going back to Cali. Right. So he clearly had the mindset of, of like, he loves I'm, moving, Cali. I'm moving past this. I'm going to have fun out there. It, he, he obviously had some faith that it would be okay. That 100%. people would just fuck with him 100%. and it would be okay. A lot of people fucked with and him. And people did, too. for the yeah. most part. Yeah. Yes. 100%. Yeah, but that's I would ah, uh, that's a rough one, man. Yeah, so I I decided to stay back and for a good reason, I think, because what if that was me in the car next to them? You know, we never know. What so you really didn't go out of worry, like I yeah. just doesn't make sense nah, to go. No, I didn't go. It made no sense. Wow. The first, I, I don't know if you guys know this. I used to DJ for Little Kim. Um, <laughs> okay. The first what time happened? I went to LA was with Kim, and it was like we weren't allowed to do nothing. We went, we went for an MTV thing, right? We had, we landed. There was like, sec, like security, not hood niggas, like real professional security. And we went to the hotel, the hotel across from the Fat Burger that Biggie talks about in the song. I want to square to take it a Fat Burger, mm-hmm. and then so we're in a hotel for like three days, and no, they do not go outside. Mm-hmm. They don't step outside. So mm-hmm. I was like. I'm, I wasn't in Junior Mafia back then. No one knows who I am. So I just like walked around the hotel by myself. I was like, I'm in Los Angeles, Hollywood. And just walked around. But like they mm-hmm. like, they and they had mad girls come to the hotel because they, I was like, how do you know all these girls? And like, yo, they, they, we used to be out here all the time. Mm-hmm. We love LA. Mm-hmm. All where, that shit that happened was fucked up. Where were you uh, during the funeral? I was there. Did, were you like all together? Were you like with the music? I went there. With with Ma- Junior Mafia and I think me and Angie Martinez went together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm. And then um I remember some they asked us to I think carry his coffin out, but I missed that. I think it was like Lance on Rivera's and his brothers and most of them kind of like went out to carry the coffin. To be Paul Um in my on my list of questions, mm-hmm. uh, as we head towards the the end of part one with DJ Enough, the first time there will ever be a part two. <laughs> um, Cass one said, "Ask him the story of when he quit Star and Buck Wild." Oh, you gonna do that here? Why not? Star, We're still in the early days because it's still was, early-ish. Star was very controlling at the time, and he was trying to control what I was playing, and I wasn't really happy about that. So I just got up and said, "I'm out of here. Fuck this. I quit," and I just left the building, went downstairs. Mid show, yeah, mid show, okay. right. Walk out the building, have my book bag on. And then Tracy Clority, the ice queen, ran downstairs, met me in the street. Where are you going? I quit. Fuck this. I'm not doing it. I'm not listening to him. Whatever. She goes, I need you. You crazy? You're one of my best DJs. So it was the first time I felt important at Hot 97. Yeah. Wow. Like, for real, for real. Because I, never, I never felt that. Because <laughs> <laughs> What about when security was escorting you out? <laughs> No, but sometimes you don't really know your worth. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then yeah. You can't see yourself the way the outside sees you. No, it. yeah. So then for the big boss to be like, you're not going nowhere. You're not whatever. And she just, I don't know, she fixed it. And then she, she worked it out. And she just moved me. Just moved me to another slot. Yeah. But that's, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people who take those chances to to know their worth or to play right. leverage some shit right. but we're humble guys like we're right. like man fuck this i just want to play music i'm a hip-hop dj fuck this and then you leave but then it gets shown to you mm-hmm. that's a good moment man right. yeah that's yes. a good moment when they go no 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 we need you you're yeah. valuable yeah um all right so at this juncture we've done about 90 minutes okay all right we got nothing there's so much more. I, we've gotten uh, we've gotten a lot. No, because mm-hmm. the Biggie part I knew was going to be very lofty. Yeah. Like okay. it's sort of. By the way, how often do people mention Biggie? D? Was it every day? All the time. Every day, like to all the time. I think it's probably the most. Um, besides Hot ninety seven, it's the other thing I'm probably most notarized for. Right. Known for. Wow. Yes. Sir. So on on the flip side, as we preview, and by the way, enough. I I want to make. Squad. 
I want to make one, <laughs> one request of you. Yeah. I want to make one request of you. When this episode drops and everyone's going, wow, DJ Enough's amazing. Don't do any other podcast interviews till we do part two. That's gotcha. all I ask. All right. I'm down. So with a couple that. of weeks. Just give us a couple of weeks right. because we gotta. I was gonna say right now, like I'm sure most people ask you about Biggie. Mm -hmm. What I don't think people realize is that heavy hitters logo that's on the Kanye Kanye's West. first album. Yes, sir. You know, and how close that relationship was. Oh, Kanye used to beg me to be down with me. Were you shut? But preview of the next episode. Here's a preview, mm -hmm. preview question. Wait, hold on. Next time on One Up is Life. DJ Enough. Yes, sir. Were you shocked? Because we were very surprised that you weren't in the genius doc. Were you surprised that the heavy hitters were not in there at all? Yeah, but, you know, I don't I don't know the guys who were doing it. Cootie and Chica. I, I know Cootie and them now, but I didn't, at the time. So you didn't see the cameras that much no, then? No, no. Wow. No. It just happened to be. It just happened to be. I mean, the. I think one of his album release parties, I think he was there. I think when his mom was there or something. That's, I might have seen that. That's it. I was at a few spots where I was in the building, but it's, it, just, it just didn't get me on camera. That's all. And and because cause I remember after it came out, like Sife said and Ebro, everyone mentioned to me, like Kanye was around Hot 97 a lot. Yeah, a lot. All the time. Cameras weren't there, but all he the was there a lot. All the time. All the so time. we'll get into all of that next uh, and, I, and all your other amazing connections and production credits and there's so much to do and how how you ended up with the heavy hitters because yes because you were flex, not asked because to flex be shitted on me and it didn't make me a big dog pit bull Sif? Mm -hmm. what do you, what say you i wasn't good enough to be down with cypher and riz and them i so, was tight you know, uh, he, had, he had dj premier everybody what, premier? was down yeah premier was a big dog pit bull for a quick second premier yeah. was yeah. oh yeah no, oh. but Enough's definitely skipping a part of the story. Oh, well, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. Next is, time on next One time. Up is oh, Life. Enough. We can't thank you enough, dude. No Pre problem. Really. Uh, we, and your patience in dealing with our first day in the new nah, studio. So we good. appreciate I'm you. I'm here, man. You guys are doing great Love work. you, E. All Love right. you. The great DJ Enough. Um, catch Cypher Sounds. We'll be at the Ha Ha Hole in Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time.